Welcome back to another episode of Cable Chatter. Today, we'll be discussing the Union City Fiesta, the arts and culture event happening in Union City on September 24th. Tita Farias will be here to discuss the agenda and all the neat things that are gonna be happening uptown. But first, we have some community announcements. On Wednesday, September 21st and 28th, the Town Square Cinema $1 Movie Wednesdays will be from 6 to 9 p.m., and that's every Wednesday. On Thursday, September 22nd and 29th, the Randolph County Historical Society will be hosting an event called The Wake. This is honoring Emma Jane Goodrich. That's from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Randolph County Historical Society from at 416 South Meridian Street over in Winchester. On Saturday, September 24th, the Union City Fiesta Cultural, Culture and Arts event. There will be food trucks, dancing, bands, and more from 1 to 10 p.m., and that's an artisan park in Union City. On Saturday, October 1st, the Journey Home Rummage Sale. will be featuring clothing, household items, anything you can imagine. That's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., 325 South Oak Street, Suite 101 over in Winchester. That same day, the 21st annual Chili Cook-Off and Pie Auction will be at the Farmland Community Center from 11.30 to 1 p.m. On Wednesday, October 5th, it's free movies for 55 and older and veterans from 1 to 3 and $1 movie Wednesdays from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Town Square Cinema. On Thursday, October 6th, the Wise Owls event will be happening with coffee, refreshments, and bingo. That's 10 to 11 a.m. at the YMCA over in Winchester. That same day, the Randolph County Historical Society will be again hosting The Wake, and that's from 1 to 4 p.m. at 416 South Meridian Street in Winchester. On Friday, October 7th, the fourth annual Live to Lead Randolph County will be happening from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Town Square Community Center. That's 32, sorry, 123 West Franklin Street Winchester, Indiana. That same day, First Friday of Union City will be hosted by the Randolph County United. That's 515 to 7 p.m. at the Roots Deli in Union City, which is 213 North Columbia Street. Also that same evening, the Farmland Concert Series will be featuring Carrie Davis from 7 to 9 p.m., guitarist and vocalist with an emphasis on gospel music. On Saturday, October 8th, the Phi Delta Kappa Beta Eta Breakfast will be from 8 to 11 a.m. That's dine-in and carry-out. The Randolph County Historical Society Museum Open House will be from 12 to 4.45 p.m. that same day, from, and that's at 416 South Meridian Street in Winchester, Indiana. Later that day, over in Winchester, the Mardi Gras Parade will be from 5 to 6 p.m. That's going to be in downtown Winchester. I'm sure that's going to be a great event. That evening, the Union City Fall Concert Series, or free concert series, will continue, featuring Nightfall from 7 to 10 p.m. On Wednesday, October 12th, the Town Square Cinema $1 Movie Wednesdays will be happening again from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's over in Winchester. On Thursday, October 13th, the Randolph County Historical Society will be again hosting The Wake, honoring Emma Jane Goodrich from 1 to 4 p.m over in Winchester, Indiana. On Friday, October 14th, and Saturday, October 15th, the Winchester 400 race will be over at the Winchester Speedway, and that's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. both days. Saturday, October 15th, October 15th, Fall Market Vendor and Craft Market will be over at the Randolph County Fairgrounds from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. over in Winchester. The Journey Home Rummage Sale at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. that same day will be at the Journey Home. That's 325 South Oak Street, Suite 101 in Winchester. Also that same day, Pumpkin Palooza at the Modoc Gardens with an $8 admission. That's from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. over at Modoc Gardens, 5629 West U.S. Highway 36 in Modoc, Indiana. We're coming into fall, it's September, October, there's tons of stuff happening in Randolph County. Lots of neat events, so many we definitely couldn't get them all here on the community announcements. Make sure you're paying attention to the Randolph County United webpage, to Facebook, to all the different things that are happening in Randolph County. We have a lot going on. Hope you just get out there and enjoy all those things. And now I'll uh, 
bring Tito Furious on to discuss the Unity Fiesta. Welcome back, uh, and I am here today with uh, Tito Frias, a Union City Council member and uh, councilman and organizer of the Union City Fiesta. Uh, Tito, tell us about the Union City Fiesta. I know this is the second one we've had, to my understanding, and I don't know much about it. So can you kind of fill us in on, on how this came about, what's going on, and what we have to look forward to? Absolutely, happy to do that. Um, just one th first thing I have to say is I'm not the actual <laughs> organizer. I mean, I'm part of it. Okay. Uh, but it's kind of a lot of hands on deck and a lot of a lot of actors. And I should mention a few. Okay. Uh, we have. I mean, it, it, it really started. Uh, there were like three different initiatives that were, um, you know, being thought about. People were, you know, talking about. Uh, one of them was the city itself, okay. uh, and a key person there would be Steve Shoemaker, uh, our city manager. And he had been trying for years to do some kind of a festival thing uh, for the Hispanic community in town. Um, and just, you know, never, you know, really took root. He just could never get it started. Sure. We had Janet Escobar. That is a key name, right? She is the owner of the... Um, uh, Cuts by Escobar downtown okay. uh, uh, hair salon, and um, she had been she hel has helped with organizing the um, the soccer games. Okay, and so that whole group of people and organizers were thinking about doing a celebration like at the end of their season, and so that uh, that was going on. There, actually, it's four. There there were there's there were a group of of, of people from the Union City community as well who, you know, like to dance and wanted to do a folkloric dance and they started to, you know, ask questions and, and organize and wonder about things. And then there's myself and my cousin Jim Nunez who's on the city council in Winchester. Um, we have a cousin, Jerry Nunez, you all know him from uh, UCO Tool and Die way back when okay. on the Ohio side. Um, and I think he was on the Indiana side for a while. He definitely lived on the Indiana side. Um, uh, he used to organize Mexican-American dances okay. in Winchester, I'm not sure about Union City, but you know, definitely in the area for the, for the migrant farm workers that would come up from Texas um, every, every you know, spring and summer. And in fact, that's, that's kind of the history of my own family. I mean, migrant farm workers, that's how we came here. So these four you know, initiatives all of a sudden came together, and I have to say it was Vincent Hernandez uh, may rest in peace, uh, who said, hey, Tito, I've been talking to this gentleman about, you know, doing something and let's go, let's go talk to, uh, to the mayor and to, and to Steve Shoemaker, uh, Mayor Spence. And we did. And boom, we got yeses and things started happening. And I took a back step, right? I'm a city council member. I don't want to be the one to do everything. Sure. There were all these initiatives going on. Let people take ownership, right? So that we have, you know, real participation and eagerness. Otherwise, it's just the head honchos that are doing everything. You know, <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> that's kind of my approach to things. And so, um, and that, that's how it happened. That's how it happened last year. Uh, it, to be honest, that was maybe, maybe end of July. Okay. So it was a very quick, uh, thing, and I'll tell you, maybe not the entire community was aware, but let me tell you, the ones who were aware, it was so joyful, rapturously joyful. I have never experienced anything in my life. And just one thing I wanted to share with you, a lot of our um, uh, Mexican uh, neighbors and you know recent immigrant neighbors, and when I say recent, it goes as far back as 25 or 30 years, many of these families, and many of them have never been back to their home country. Think about mm -hmm. that. Oh, they've wow. never seen their family again. And sure, sure, you know, they get together and they do things, but to see a celebration like this was overwhelming. It was just unimaginable. I get emotional just, it was, a, it was amazing. And of course, that was the last time that my own father, who passed away in February, that he went and, and actually danced in public and he had never seen <laughs> anything like that ever. Wow. So and he's been here for, you know, 50 or more than 50 years. 
in the Saratoga and Union City area. That's where this, you know, this is where we grew up. So, um, so that's how it all came together and happened last year. And of course, from the city's point of view, uh, there's a, I mean, because of that community, we want to bring people together, the whole community, mm -hmm. not just the Hispanic community, bring people together and sort of celebrate together. Um, and you know, the vision is that maybe this will grow. Uh, and grow. So we're trying, you know, we're making mistakes along the way and so forth. <laughs> Anything <laughs> like that. You're exactly. going to, there's going to be missteps. It's just you're figuring things out. So <laughs> here we go. So we did it last year. Absolute success. This year we decided we're going to do it in the Artisan, at the Artisan Park. So it's going to be downtown. So uh, different kind of space, different scenario. Uh, the hard thing about the park, which was wonderful, people loved it. Um, the hard thing was just the, the, the infrastructure, right? The lighting, right. the bathrooms, <laughs> the dance floor. Uh -uh. <laughs> yeah, there's, if you're looking at those pieces, there's not as much infrastructure out there. That's true. Exactly. And so, you know, we're moving it, we're trying it downtown, see how that goes this year, uh, and we'll see how that is. And so we've got a nice lineup coming up. Um, the 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 food trucks. This is this will be for September twenty fourth. That's a week from Saturday. Okay. Um, and uh, it'll the, 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 there'll be food trucks there. Amazing food trucks and the food trucks. Some of them that you you know you know from other events, but also families, right? Mm -hmm. Who per, you know making their traditional foods oh, wow. that they they eat, that they eat at home and enjoy. And wow. uh, they're going to come out, so definitely uh, a culinary fest sure. as well <laughs> uh, for that. So they open up at about one. I'm sure some of them will open up earlier. Um, but then the first big thing is at 1:30. Maybe I should have the, my thing. Is uh, a salsa dance class. Now we didn't do any salsa last year. We don't have that much representation from, say, uh, the Cuban, Puerto Rican or Dominican communities. There's a few Dominicans in town um, that I know of. Uh, but, you know, so, so salsa comes from that that part of, of, of the Caribbean. Um, and we were just trying it out. Uh, funny story, you know, we were looking at bringing a whole salsa band, but they, they use a lot of horns. Okay, yeah. So it would have been a 10 people, and it was a bit expensive, and we're like, oh, can we really do this? So we ended up just doing a dance class <laughs> and seeing who turns up. And the person actually teaching it is my sister Rosie, my little sister Rosie, who also is a graduate of Union City. Okay. Um, and she owns a dance studio in Pittsburgh. And so she makes a, like, she's a professional dance instructor. And so it's, a, it's free, guys, you know, come on out <laughs> and learn a few steps. She's gonna teach a salsa dance class for half an hour starting at 1.30. Okay. And then she's gonna morph it into swing. She's gonna teach swing. Why swing at a Latin American festival? Because of the next band is rock music and you can dance swing, dance steps to rock music. Okay. And rock music because yes, it's about bringing the community together there are two rock bands playing and both of them feature my other sister i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i didn't make the selection guys right like, so like they I were said, starting I to sound like a family affair so, here you know so it's not me it's yeah. just you know she's awesome right so she's got two bands and one of them is called cherry bomb and cherry bomb is a joan jett tribute band okay so she's going to be doing it like joan jett does you might even think she's joan jett. she might look like her she might sound like her she might dress and act like her <laughs> <laughs> and the, the and she, you know she lives in florida now my sister and they perform they've performed in several large venues and so i mean she's beginning to you know build that up so she's great i mean building that up and she's bringing that to union city so i feel i don't know i, I feel privileged to have you know a band like that a nationally you know um, practically nationally uh, re renowned uh joan jett tribute band joan jett tribute band and then so that's for now then she's gonna uh uh she's gonna morph into password reset so okay. she, password reset is mm -hmm. the band that my sister plays in uh, they call her roxy rax roxy rocks uh she's also known as ralph Raffaella, um, that is, she's as, and she's been with Password Reset in Union City several times. Right. I've she's performed at some name. of the, um, uh, the, the, the arts festival, uh, and so forth. Just a parenthesis, 
um, this year they didn't have an arts festival and they decided to do it together. So that's the part <laughs> the, of, the, of the arts festival that, that, that comes to this. So the, one okay. of the, the, the second annual Union City Fiesta, <clears throat> but we're calling it the Union City Fiesta Arts and Cultural Event because um, you know the arts festival is not happening this year, but we're doing it uh, together. So sure. on September 24th. So after, after she plays with her two bands, then we have a band called Exalto Norteño. And Exalto Norteño, I'll, I'll pronounce it in English, Exalto Norteño. <laughs> uh, Norteño music is refers to the north, northern Mexico. Okay. And when I hear northern Mexico, I also hear southern Texas, guys, because that's where my family's from. And that's the kind of music we kind of grew up with. And these guys are based in Alexandria, right here in Indiana. Uh, just on the other side of Muncie, and so they, they, they played last year, and they were hit, and so awesome. they're coming back. Um, so that's the band that would be would have a German influence. If, you, if people are familiar with, if you've been to a, a, an Oktoberfest and heard a German style band, it's a very similar, very similar sound. I tell the story that one time I was in Africa, you know, I've worked in Africa for many years, and in Conakry in Guinea, and their largest uh, hotel, like the most luxurious hotel there, uh, decided to have an Oktoberfest. I'm like, here I am in deepest, darkest Africa, and they're having an Oktoberfest. I'm going. Sure. So I, <laughs> so I went, and to my surprise, the band, they brought a band in from Austria, Northern Austria, and they were singing in German, but they were playing music that like touches my heart because guys, I grew up with this stuff. You know, it sounded exactly like a Tex-Mex, you know, band okay, okay. playing their thing. And I'm like, yeah, grabbed a French girl and started dancing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, this is the this is the style. So for people who have any maybe a German heritage or, you know, have that affinity, that kind of thing, you'll hear accordion. Um, Exalto Norteño is, is, is the band to, to hit for that. After that, we're going to do a parade. The parade okay. is actually... Um, a tradition in Mexico. Um, I didn't know. I, grew, I didn't grow up there, right? We mm -hmm. didn't, you know, we don't have, uh, we're Texans, right? So, um, but um, I've learned from the community here that on, on Mexican Independence Day, uh, people will just decorate their vehicles. They'll decorate their cars or trucks, whatever they have, and have a parade in town. That's just a tradition. Okay. Uh, you know, in, in many or probably most parts of, uh, of Mexico. So we're going to try to reproduce that here. Uh, it's not exactly Mexican Independence Day. That happens, I think, the day after tomorrow. Or <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's coming up here pretty quick. <laughs> so uh, we're, you know, this is like the eve or something. And uh, so, you know, it's the, kind of that, that time. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a little bit. Let, let me just go ahead and do that. Sure. Parenthesis. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Hispanic Heritage Month starts like now and last until mid-October. Okay. And so, I mean, it was kind of by chance that we chose sort of mid to late September last year when we, you know, off the cuff decided to just organize this. Uh, but it does end up being uh, Hispanic Heritage Month and it turns out that many Latin American countries, like many of the Central American countries, many countries in South America, all have their Independence Day right, ar right around this time. Right. All right. So it, you'll see, you may see flags from 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 Mexico for sure. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the, all the ones that they're that we're getting, but I mean, we have in our community here people from Guatemala. We have people from Nicaragua in our community, the living in Union City. We have people. I mean, these are the ones I know. If there are more, like that, I that I haven't met. Um, there are people from, I, I saw a family from Venezuela. I know there's a Colombian, at least one lady who's Colombian. I think her daughter was here. I'm not sure if she's left. But, um, you know, so we have people from all of these countries that, I mean, we're saying from these countries, but they're from Union City. Like when they, right. when they identify, they say, hey, hey I'm from, I live in Union City, you know. Um, so, I mean, they're part of the community. So, you know, th this, you know, they, it's, it's for them as well as, you know, those of us who have been here for, for, for ages or who first colonized uh, Indiana. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, when the Indians decided to leave and whatever. Anyway, so <laughs> I won't go back that far. So, okay, so then there is, after the parade, there's a folkloric dance. Okay. So we've got several numbers 
mostly from Mexico. I don't know all of them, and, and I know there's some, a gr another group or an individual that I don't really know, so I'm not sure what part of, of uh, the culture is being represented, but definitely all Latin American dances and stuff will be represented. Beautiful with the flowing dresses and the, the hats and everything. Awesome, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, we're gonna have, at the end of that, a line dance. And guys, this is Mexican country music. And when I say country music, you will recognize it as country music. Don't mind the language. It's country music as you know it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. As you know it here in Union City, as we used to hear it at the swimming pool when we were growing up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, so there's going to be a line dance there. Then there's gonna have a, we're going to have a band called Estreno de Mexico. Estreno de Mexico, kind of going out there, a little bit of a stretch. Uh, they're a style of music called Duranguense which is a techno banda. I have to explain what banda is, and then I'll explain what techno banda is. Banda, if you're familiar, if you've heard, uh, you know, maybe some of our neighbors driving with uh, their you know, music in their cars, you might have heard something that sounds like an oompa band. Because I didn't grow up with that, but that's, they love this. A lot of, you know, people in different parts of Mexico, they love this stuff. And it's just literally oompa, 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 okay. oompa, okay. and they literally play it with a tuba and brass instruments <laughs> and you know an accordion is always part of it but this so that's that's banda that's that's popular and a lot of the things that like the tejano the tex tejano the the, the, the tex-mex stuff that i grew up with um sometimes we will hear those songs reproduced but much faster <laughs> okay. and with tubas and 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 you know baritones and these horns which like i never heard it like that before <laughs> so interesting kick and it's danced like a polka but much much faster all right, faster. all right. So, but this band plays a techno banda, which is a umpa band sound, except that it's synthesized. All right. So okay. techno, but <laughs> they also play a few other styles, cumbia and wapango. For those of you who, who are familiar, I listen to some of their music uh, online, and so I'm sure they're going to give us a nice uh, uh, selection. They're going to play for two hours. Oh wow! Uh, and during the breaks, we're going to have karaoke. So, and we're still taking people, uh, if you want to sing uh, something karaoke, it could be in English, it can be in, uh, it can be in, it can be in, in a different, in other languages. We have some, I met some Guatemalan family the other day who speak a language called Man. Know what I'm saying? They speak their, you know, the indigenous mm -hmm. Indian languages that still, uh, uh, in, in, in Guatemala, some of our community speaks these languages. So, they are more than welcome to come and sing in, 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 in that, or whatever language <laughs> you want to sing, show your talent. Um, and that's basically uh, the, the program for, for all, all day Saturday. So that runs again from uh, starting at like one with the opening of the food trucks, 1.30 with the start of the salsa lesson, and running all through that until 10 p.m. at night is when we'll call it uh, a day. So the future, the city uh, has expressed its vision that we will let this grow organically as much as it can or could. Uh, we know of some uh, cities and municipalities in Indiana and Ohio that have festivals like this. Some of them are three-day festivals. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you, we have, we have the ability to grow to that size of an event. Um, and, we, and, you know, for Union City to actually be part of the activities in Union City that are attractive to other, you know, around the area. Guys, the vision, the overall vision, now I'm talking as a city council member, the overall <laughs> vision um, of Mayor Chad Spence, if I may, is that we want Union City to grow. Of course. Right? Absolutely. We're building a new, a new neighborhood just west of North Plum Street. You know, we've got plans to refurbish the park. I know that has been an issue. It's, it's one that just can't come fast enough, but we haven't gotten to it yet, uh, but it's there. Like the plan is, is under development, and of course we're gonna be seeking grant funding for that. Um, you've seen the downtown explode, you know, mm -hmm. I, like never. Guys, I started selling essential oils in downtown at the second Saturday markets in 2016. It was dead. I'm, dead. Yeah, I'm sure. Now there's people walking around. Mm -hmm. You hear music. There's ice cream being sold on the other corner. There's a coffee shop. 
You know, there's a fresh fruit snack shop across the street. You know, and, we, and, and then our, our other, you know, we have the, 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 the Mexican store that we all know and love, and we have the uh, uh, corner cupboard that we all know and love, you know, they're, they're, and we have, um, uh, uh, what do we call that, like a farmer's market, right, right. that happens on Saturday morning. There <clears throat> is life in downtown Unicity now. We hadn't seen that in decades. And right. I'm, I'm, I've driven down, you know, down to get coffee Saturday morning, and it, it, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of people. There's, a, I mean, there's a lot of traffic moving around, a lot of people walking around and getting different stuff, and it's, it's, there's stuff happening. Exactly. So the idea is to have Unicity be an interesting place. We have a diversity. Let's tap into that, and you know, become a magnet. That can only bring more business. That can only be, bring more residents. That can only bring more tax revenue that we can use for amazing things, upkeeping our streets and sidewalks mm -hmm. and everything that we need, uh, you know, and everything we need. I mean, that's what, more jobs. That That's the kind of thing, when you create, this is, the, and we've learned this from other municipalities, and when we, when I was first elected, you know, they sent us to uh, a training uh, for newly elected uh, municipal, you know, newly elected uh, officials. And that was one of the big lessons that you don't invite businesses to come in. That might happen, but it, you don't get a large, for example, a large manufacturing uh, operation moving in where you don't have people. You gotta have, you gotta have people to you work the jobs, you know? <laughs> and these large manufacturing operations, they have higher ups, the executives. They want a nice place to send their kids to school. Mm -hmm. They want a nice place to live. I mean, they're gonna work hard sure. in the community and they wanna be able to have, you know, what they'd be able, you know, what they would earn, you know? And so, and so all of the, these things that we're doing is all to provide that kind of, it's fun and awesome for us, but that means it could also be fun and awesome for others, sure. including investors, including other kinds of other, other businesses that might want to move to town. And that's what we're doing, what we're, what we're seeing right now. So this, this festival is just another part of it, you know, that can attract people, attract, and you know, people come to in the city, they spend their money here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what we need. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's where, that's where it goes. Well, I mean, it sounds like I heard. I remember hearing about the first one, the first uh, fiesta when it happened, and the you know, I didn't know it happened, but I heard about it later, and that um, lots of great things. And it sounds like you've got a uh, those of you that the organizers and everybody has got a really neat lineup. And so that's uh, September twenty fourth, right? September twenty fourth starts at one, ends at ten ish, whenever it ends, as it kind of flows through. And then I'm sure uh, there will be lots of exciting things going on. Um, and I just want to add a few names. Sure. I, mean, I think I started, I mentioned a few names at the beginning. So definitely a thanks to uh, Mayor Chad Spence, uh, Steve Shoemaker, and the rest of city government, this, who's been very supportive. Um, uh, thank you to Jeanette Escobar. She's been a key, a key player uh, in the whole thing. In fact, I'm like embarrassed, like she's the one maybe who should be talking. Um, Jesus Jimenez. Uh, Jesus Jimenez, he's... Uh, uh, been very active as well in help in, in organizing uh, and doing all kinds, sorts of things to support uh, the efforts. Um, Mariana Romero, um, uh, I know I'm forgetting names, I apologize. <laughs> um, Liliana uh, uh, as well. Uh, so I just wanted to mention a few sure, names. Sure, no. <laughs> so you, you all know that it's not just me, right? Uh, in fact, it's pr I'm the, probably the least, <laughs> <laughs> except that I'm on city council, so it gives me a little uh, advantage. Well, Tito, I certainly appreciate, <laughs> and I, I, when I was reaching out, I'm like, I knew this was coming up, and, and we, we talked about it, we need to, who do we get to, to come talk, and I appreciate that you were willing to come stand up here, even if you, you say you might be the, the least qualified to speak <laughs> about it, you know, whatever, but I appreciate you coming on here. I know it always takes a lot of hands, a lot of hard work to make anything like this uh, come together, and so I know, you know, from a community member, I appreciate it, and I just, you know, appreciate that we've got neat stuff going on and bringing people to town and just embracing our, our culture and heritage as it is, and so, um, um, thank you so much for, for your hard work and, and doing everything you can to put this together. So if people want to find out more about this, if they don't want to watch through the whole show and to get the agenda, where, where would they find more information about uh, the event? Uh, right now, we're going to put some flyers up uh, in the next few days when we completely uh, solidify the, the schedule. But go on Facebook. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. And on Facebook, just write Union City Fiesta under events. Okay. So go under events and type in Union City Fiesta and it should come right up. Uh, it's a dark picture taken at night of a, uh, of, of a woman dancing in a beautiful black, uh, I'm sorry, beautiful blue dress uh, with a gentleman in his uh, you know, Mexican, uh, fancy Mexican uh, mariachi style. Uh, so you'll see that uh, right away at Union City Fiesta. So yep, uh, check it out on Facebook. Uh, definitely try to come out on the 24th, enjoy the culture, the culinary delights, the, it, the, the sights, the sounds, the whole thing. Um, again, Tito, thank you so much for, for coming on. I'm sure we'll, we'll have you on here another time, talk about other more council specific stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, just to kind of learn more about that, but I appreciate you coming on and talking about the Fiesta. Um, again, jump on Facebook, uh, look up the Fiesta uh, under events and come out on the 24th and enjoy um, what you City has to offer. Thank you very much. Thank you.